This is a countdown timer that is running at 60 frames per second and showing milliseconds. And we are going to look at different ways that I explored when building this and how they differ in performance. Why did I make a countdown timer? Because I tweeted about not having a problem that I could build a product around to make videos because I want to make my videos from actual problems that I have building things but I can't take my work problems because I can't use those uh, that code in that way so I need my own projects and then I got one suggestion to uh, make a concept or draw and design a concept that he's suggesting here but I'm not really the water plant guy. I'm a developer that writes code, so I couldn't do that, but I could do something else instead. I'm building this uh, countdown timer uh, for now. It's just this countdown timer, but I'm going to uh, build it more uh, that I'm going to put up as a start screen. So you can use this instead of this screen because this screen is not really doing anything since this bar is the same as this bar. So it's just wasted space. But if you're going to run this on every computer in the world, because everybody will run this, right? Then you have to be responsible. And uh, I tried to optimize this a bit so it would be fast, but not burn your computer up because we don't want to do that. Uh, if we look at the code for this, it's just simple because I just made a, made a HTML file and then I'm uh, I'm updating the the content of the screen so I'm not using any JavaScript libraries or frameworks or anything it's just plain old JavaScript I used var everywhere because my idea was that it should uh, use vanilla JavaScript and also work in IE 11 uh, but we will see what happens with that this is not the production code code um, so uh, one approach that you might think would work if you are uh, new to JavaScript uh, would be to put it in a while loop and do it like this. This is not a very good idea because if I save this and I reload this page, you will see that um, nothing happens because it freezes Chrome. So that was a bad idea. Now I have to kill Chrome and start a new Chrome. And uh, we should get rid of that. It's bad. And then we have the set interval method. Uh, I do the same thing. Uh, I, I will use the naive next. The thing about the different functions I use here was that I experimented with different ways of getting the string out with the time. Uh, but none of these made any difference in the CPU usage. So I will just use naive next um, throughout this example because it's the what. It's the one that I built when I originally implemented it, but it's not important for this video. We are looking at updating and why we use, um, why request animation frame is the best option for this problem. So let's now look at set interval and why we don't want to use it. So let's load this again. And now we have this uh, page again, it looks the same and the performance is also the same. It updates very frequently. I couldn't run the Chrome DevTools performance tab or the pro performance measurement thing in um, while I was running the video recording because it may made it not work as expected. So I had to turn off the recording and do the, the performance uh, measurement collection and then I saved screenshots and then we are going to look at that. This is the set interval that we are looking at right now. And if you look at this uh, screenshot that I have here, you can see that in this frame, this frame is 16.6 uh, milliseconds. It starts here and it ends here. You can see that I'm doing the calculation one, two, three, four, five times. So I am updating the content of the screen without repainting it. So it won't end up on the screen anyway because it's not in this frame um, so we do not want that 
because this is meaningless work. We don't need to do this work. We want to be tied to the rendering. That's why a request animation frame is good. I was also I also did another thing. I went uh, because I had this set interval here. I was like, but how fast will it get if I instead use set timeout and set it to zero, and then I do another set timeout in here instead, um, and see how I, that would look. And it looked like this. It's about the same. So uh, we we get these. Recalculation, recalculations happening in between frames, which is not uh, good, as I said, because it's meaningless work. We don't need to do it. If we instead look at the request animation frame, if we go back to uh, this solution and reload the page, I'm going to stop the video recording again and make a new screenshot. Okay, I have recorded it now and uh, here it is. I took a screenshot and as you can see we have one nice piece of work every animation frame and that's what we want. We don't want to do this uh, other work that we don't need. If we are not going to show it, we are not going to do it. Um, so that's why we want to use request animation frame in this case. But another concern that we have is that the CPU is actually being used quite a lot to update this. Uh, and for this case where we want to have the, the milliseconds showing, it's, uh, it's for good reasons. If you don't need that, you could slow the update up a little, uh, down a little bit by checking how um, how much time has passed since I last updated my screen. So what I'm doing here is that I will only update this every half second. So we need to have at least 500 milliseconds since we last updated the screen. Uh, this will um, not look as good on the screen, but if I look at the CPU usage for this, uh, you will see that it will go down. So we are no longer at the same percentage that we were at before. But the the looks of it is not that great. But let's say that you instead only need to have seconds and not milliseconds. Then you should not um, update all the time. But you can still use request animation frame. Uh, so let's say this. I have a different method here, which does it's the same naive string creation, but it's now without milliseconds. So if I uh, reload the page now, I have an it, this counter and it goes down as it did before, but it doesn't have milliseconds. And in this case, we don't. It's okay that it uh, have a slow frame rate. And as you can see, the CPU is much lower because Chrome doesn't need to update the frames as much because nothing changed. Okay, that was uh, some different ways or some problems that you could run into or some concerns that you could think about when you do a countdown timer. If you want to see more videos of my me struggling and maybe learn something from it, you should uh, consider subscribing to this channel. And if you like the video, please like it. Uh, and if you have questions, you write a comment and I will reply. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.